everyone. I am Dr. Pramod Joshi, MD Medicine, practicing last 43 years. Over my long practice, what I have observed that patients are afraid of anesthesia and surgery. In this video, you will learn about the facts of anesthesia and your myths will be clear. To enlighten you on this subject, I am inviting eminent anesthesiologist Dr. Shubhangi Kothari here to tell you about what is anesthesia, what are the types of anesthesia and you watch this video till end to clear your doubts. She has been practicing in our Pimpri Chinchwad area for more than 35 years and she has been past president of the Anesthesia Society of Pimpri Chinchwad. She was also governing council member of the state and editor of a prestigious anesthesia journal. Shubhangi Kothari of the welcome. Thank you doctor for such a kind introduction. I am more than happy to clear the myths about the anesthesia and really tell the facts about the anesthesia to all of you. My first question to you is, what is this anesthesia? Anesthesia is a controlled temporary loss of awareness or the sensation which is induced to, for the medical purpose. This comprises four stages. First is the analgesia, means there is no sensation. Then amnesia, where there is a loss of memory, atonia. Muscle power is lost and the, there is autonomic reflexes inhibition means our body's response to flight or fright is abolished. You mean to tell that person doesn't feel pain, he doesn't know what surgery is being done and he is absolutely comforted. Yes. So my second question is recently celebrated World Anesthesia Day on 16th October. Can you more elaborate on it? Yes. Let me ask you doctor, have you ever thought about the surgery without anesthesia? No, 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 not possible. See, look at you. Just thought of it shudders your spine. So, nowadays the anesthesia has progressed a lot. And this has happened on the day of 16th October 1846. A groundbreaking event has occurred at the Boston. A young dentist, William Thomas Marty, who has uh, given the anesthesia to a patient successfully with anesthetic agent ether for removal of the tumor from the neck. Since that day, in a to honor him, such a great human being, all over the world, this 16 October is celebrated as World Anesthesia Day. Good information. One of my patients recently asked me, if Atamaza operation karnar madhya mala chloroform jenar ka ho, do you still use chloroform? No, it's a total myth. Chloroform has long gone back. Even I have not seen the chloroform. And the anesthesia science has evolved from chloroform to the workstations. Nowadays, we can give the accurate doses of the anesthetic agents perfectly to the patient depending on the type of surgery. My next question to you is, who administers anesthesia? Is it the paramedics or doctors? No, no doctor. It's a complete myth. The person who delivers the anesthesia or administers is a totally fully qualified doctor who has done the special training in this subject after completing his MBBS. And this training is for two or three years. That's good information. Is it true that once you give anesthesia, anesthesia or this can leave the patient? <laughs> How can one leave the patient, doctor? Anesthesia logist is always there in the operation till the end of the operation. He reverses the anesthesia also. Actually, do you know who monitors the patient's vitals in the operation theater? Pulse rate, blood pressure, respiration, even urine output, blood loss. All these things are monitored by the anesthesia logist. And he leaves the patient only when he feels that the, it is safe to shift to the patient to the recovery room and recovery staff can manage it. So you mean to say that all patient controls are with you, you are managing everything and surgeon is only operating. Is that true? Yes, perfectly. Now you tell me when we order what we call as pre-anesthesia checkup, why so many investigations are done? See, all these investigations are for the to know the healthy status of the patient who is coming for the operation. And this differ from patient to patient. Let me explain it to you. A young patient coming for the swelling on a hand requires local anesthesia or small, and uh, shortly short general anesthesia. Then he requires only basic investigation. But if the same surgery has to be done on the patient who is elderly, above 50 years age, having the diseases like hypertension, diabetes, or asthma or heart disease, definitely he requires more investigation than the first person. So we advise all these investigations. 
Yeah. These investigations help us to know the condition of all these major organs, heart, lungs, liver, brain. Now my next question to you is, is it necessary to have a consultation of the anesthetist before surgery? It's a very good question. Doctor, consultation by the anesthesiologist prior to the surgery is very important as it can create a rapport between the patient and the anesthesiologist. And this helps to elevate his fears. Apart from this, anesthesiologist will come to know about the patient's history also. So that the patient should give all information about himself. Like whether he is suffering from hypertension, diabetes, asthma or heart disease. Whether he is having any drug allergy yes. or food allergy. Whether he has undergone any operation previously. What type of anesthesia he has given. Any complication has occurred. Not only this, he, he should never forget to mention about his habits. Tobacco chewing, smoking, alcohol consumption. All these are helpful for the anesthesiologist. So he can plan the anesthesia accordingly and minimize the risk. Information you have given now? Yeah. But one more thing the anesthesiologist needed. That patient should inform about his medicines, their duration and the doses that he is taking. That also helps to plan the operation or when to give those doses. My next question to you is why you instruct the patient kneel by mouth before surgery? Khana pina ban kar dete. Khana pina ban kar dete, magar wo jarrori tha. Okay, explain. See, when we eat the food, that food remains in our stomach for 4-5 hours. But when we are awake, all the our protective reflexes are active. But when the patient is anesthetized or unconscious, this protective mechanism has gone. So suppose vomiting occurs, which happens if in the conscious patient, this protective mechanism protects the patient. But if it happens in the anesthetized patient, this mechanism has been lost. So all these food particles can enter the windpipe or the lungs and it causes the grave damage. So nothing by mouth is very important and that is for 6 hours for the solid foods in major cases and 8 to 10 hours in pregnant patients as well as in the patient who are who are having the food fatty food or fried food previous day. So this nothing by mouth is the important instruction to be given by anesthesiologist to the patient. And also and the ward staff should inform them. Not yes, to anything. yes, they should also inform. Other than this, I would like to highlight about other things also. Chocolates, chewing gums also should not be taken. Not even liquids, tea, coffee, milk, irritated drink. Now you tell me madam, what are the different types of anesthesia and how long they la their effect last? Yeah, but before the types of anesthesia, I think I would like to give more instruction, some more instructions to the patient. Like patient, on the day of operation, patient should be accompanied by the adult person. He should not wear the jewelry, no lipstick, no nail polish, dentures should be removed, contact lenses should be removed, nail paint and uh, lipstick are uh, to be removed, which, are, which is a very important thing. As everyone is aware, the natural colors of the lips and the nails gives the uh, oxygen saturation of that particular uh, patient. Now, you tell about the different types of anesthesia and how long the effects last. Uh, there are broadly three or four types of anesthesia. First is the local anesthesia, where the anesthetic agent is given at the site of the operation. And so that part becomes the numb, pain-free, and the surgeon can perform small surgeries for that particular part like excision of swelling, abscess, all these things. While next is the regional anesthesia. It includes spinal, epidural or the nerve blocks. In spinal and epidural, anesthetic agent is administered in the back, in between the space where, in between the two vertebral spaces. While in nerve blocks, that particular nerve is blocked with anesthetic agents. And in all these cases, Patient is awake, but patient can be made to sleep if the need arises. Fourth type is the general anesthesia. And this general anesthesia can be from half an hour or to the 5-6 hours as long as one wants it. And here, the action remains till the end of the operation. At the end of the operation, anesthesia reversal 
is done and then only when the patient's condition is stable, patient is shifted to the ward. Uh, can you tell me what is the duration for the spinal and regional anesthesia? It varies the drugs. It is around two hours and if some drugs are added to that thing, it, it is prolonged for two to three hours. Are there any side effects of anesthesia? In general, there are no side effects. Sometimes the general anesthesia patient gets vomiting sensation, nauseating, sore throat. He may be sleepy or drowsy. But that's all. And all these things are controllable. Which you mean to say gradually they wane off? Yes. Just now you said about the spinal. Few of my patients keep telling me I get back in. When 20 years back, I had taken anesthesia for delivery and everything. Is that something true or is it is a myth they are carrying in the mind? It's a complete myth, doctor. Spinal anesthesia and backache is not related at all. This backache, particularly it happens in the scissor uh, section patients. And this backache is more or less is related to many a number of factors. It can be due to the lack, laxity of the ligaments or it can be due to the lack of exercises. But I am sure and I will definitely tell you confidently that this is not related to the spinal anesthesia. So usually I answer them like this because you are not doing yoga, you are not doing exercise, you are increasing your weight. That's why you backache and not anesthesia responsible. So I am right. Yes, so nice of you, you are telling like this. So do you work only in the operation theatre or you have expanded your field further? Previously we used to be only Pardamakche Kalata. Fakta operation theatre ma dhyabhi kaam karen sir. But Atta, our horizons has been expanded. We also work in the other than the operation theatre. For example, many anesthesiologists have become intensivists. They work in the ICU room. Do you know how many ICU in charge are there in all over India? More than 60% are anesthesiologists. Yes, I am aware about it because I was chairman of ICC. Yes. <laughs> anesthesiologists work as the expert in the trauma unit. They are helpful for the labor analysis. Because of their work as a labor anesthesiologist, patient can have the painless childbirth. Wonderful. Yes. And the one more branch is coming up. Sort of a super specialty where they are called as the pain physicians. And these doctors elevate the patient's chronic pains, cancer pains. Yeah, even in some cases we have that uh, after herpes zoster, severe neurologic pains yes. and they can't sleep. That time also, I think uh, they give this pain physicians helps. Yes, correct. That's right. So, ca can you tell me the take home message for my patients? Yeah, after hearing all this conversation, I know that many myths have been uh, cleared. At the same time, that you have learned about the facts. But just remember that anesthesia is not a mathematical calculation. Two plus two is four equal to four. It is not like that. Even in a healthy patient, anesthesia carries a small risk. See, when you are walking on the road, driving a car, or traveling in a bus or a plane, the risk is tiny, minute, minimum. The same level of risk is with the anesthesia also. So, each and every anesthesiologist tries to be a best and the safest driver to minimize this list. And I think, I hope, that all your doubts are cleared now. Thank you madam for explaining in detail about anesthesia, the different types and removing the wrong understandings and the myths about the anesthesia. I hope you must have understood everything about anesthesia and by, if you like this video, please subscribe it, share it and press the bell icon. Thank you.